Hi beauties. So today we have like a sneak peek into our Halloween week where I'm going to be doing seven days of different makeup looks for Halloween. I've thought really hard about them. I'm going to keep them a secret until we actually post them. Yeah, I've, I've come up with costume concepts and, and makeup concepts. Hopefully it turns out really cool. I'm really excited about it. So this is a little taste of it. I was thinking about like pieces of clothing that I have that are like Halloween related that I, I have not featured in one of those. And I, I thought about these legs leggings here. Let's see. Can you see it, Nikki? Is it on camera? What about now? Okay, so they have spider webs on them, right? So because of the spider webs, I figured, all right, I'll do a kind of cool like spider look. Super simple, um, not too complicated, just something that's like Halloween-ish. I um, mean, I wanted to do purple. I don't know why. Just that was the color I chose to do. So because of that, I'm gonna do like a purple eye look and then I'm thinking I'm gonna do maybe some webs or something around it. And then maybe like a little spider somewhere on my cheek. That's the, that's the goal. This is not gonna be an intricate spider. I'm not trying to win a prize. I'm just gonna do a little spider, super simple. I do because I'm gonna do purple. I'm gonna, I have the Huda Beauty Amethyst Obsessions palette. A lot of good little purple options there. And then I did grab the uh, Urban Decay Full Spectrum palette just because when I'm looking for colors, I normally go for this guy. He's a good one to, to have just to be able to grab some stuff. Got a lot of options there. Uh, three really solid purple shades and then some blacks and stuff as well. So yeah, let's jump into it. What am I going to chat about today? I honestly don't know. Um, I came home from work and I just was like, I'm just going to film. I woke Nikki up. He's not happy with me right now, but he's a trooper. So here he is sitting uh, at seven in the morning filming a spider look just because I felt like doing spider stuff. So I was trying to think about like, okay, what can we chat about today? What's kind of Halloween-y? I was thinking about ghost stories and I was thinking about what I want to do for all the videos. My goal is for each of the videos during the, the seven days of Halloween or Halloween week as I'm calling it, I just wanted to come up with a good story, a scary story or a related story, something about it that's related to the concept, but also is very Halloween centered. So while I was blending that out, uh, Nikki suggested maybe I talk about some of my favorite things about Halloween, like why I love it so much. And that's a good idea because I don't, I always talk about how much I love Halloween and how it's my favorite holiday, but I guess I don't really talk about why. And it's truthfully just because it's always kind of been that way. Um, like as a little kid, I always like to dress up, like just all the time. I just wanted to, I would be fine dressing up anytime for any reason. Um, like spirit week at school, I always enjoyed it just because it gave me an excuse to wear something different than what I normally wear. And I guess, you know, it kind of makes sense because I wound up going to school for theater. So obviously, you know, I like the, the idea of like being somebody other than myself, um, even if it's only for pretend. So I guess that's that's a big part of it, I think, is just the excuse to be able to like, you can be whatever you want to be. I say a, a day, but, I celebrate a lot, uh, way longer than a day. So we'll say for a month, because that's in October. The whole month of October is Halloween in my opinion. So I like that. I think that's always been like, even as a little kid, that was just something that I was like, oh, it's so exciting. And and I remember like being little and thinking really hard about like, what do I want to be this year? And I did all the classic stuff. Like I was, my mom made me a witch one year. My very first Halloween, I was a pumpkin, like a little, little pumpkin baby. My parents, my parents' best friend, uh, the husband, and because they're a couple, the husband, he kept saying, nice lid. And so that was like an ongoing joke through my whole childhood is that people would just be like, nice lid. And it was like, you know, about my little pumpkin. And now, now I have a pumpkin on my head again. I don't know. I love dressing up. That's a huge part of it for me. I also love candy. I mean, I, I don't know a lot of people who don't love candy, but I guess some people out there are like, I don't like candy. I love candy. I love an excuse to eat candy. I loved the idea of like, we'd get to go, like, you know, you'd walk and you'd feel like, oh my God, we walked so long. And then you'd come home and you just have like this huge bag of candy. I love that. I love all things scary. I, oh, and I always have, like, I was a little, little kid, like five years old. And I was really close with my Nana. And every day I'd be like, Nana, tell me a scary story. And she'd have to like make up scary stories. Like, and I would, I would make her make me a character in them. I had to be a character in them. And then I would go and I'd fight. In the, I would act them out and I would fight. She'd be like, you're in the haunted house. And I would be like out there fighting. And I'm like, I'm fighting. So I just always liked scary. I like scary stuff. I just always have. 
Okay, so off camera, I just blended. Um, I've been basically just using a mixture of these two to kind of give myself like a full all the way up to the brow. And then I blended just a little bit with a white shade in the Urban Decay palette. Mom and I would watch like scary stuff. We'd read like, you know, those, I, I remember like the scary stories to tell in the dark. We had like the audio version of it, you know, back when we had CD players. Um, and my brother and I, when like my parents would make us clean our rooms, we would sit and listen to it while we were cleaning. And we could listen to it like a thousand times. I just love the story so much. I was always like, oh my God. I love it. I love being scared. I want to watch scary stuff. My mom would try and keep me from watching horror movies. And I've talked about that on the channel before. Like I love haunted houses, but for a long time, I always liked being scared, but I was really afraid of everything. Like I know, and I know you're little, like I was, and when I'm talking, I'm, I was little, like I was a little kid, but I was afraid of damn near everything couldn't do the dark. I used to sleep with my head under the covers because I felt like that was gonna protect me somehow. Didn't, I had to have a night light. Like there was, I was not a brave little kid, but I wanted to act all tough. I would say until I was about 11, but really it's, it was mainly when I was like five to eight or so. That was about like the time when I was really very just petrified of everything, sleeping with my head under the covers and all that craziness. So I was a big ass scary cat, but I wanted to, I liked being scared. Like I enjoyed it, but I also was like to an extent. I'm gonna talk about my experience in haunted houses because there's a couple damn good stories with it. When I was five, we heard driving up to see my grandma um, about this place called the Haunted Mill that was kind of up in the area she lived in. And we would see billboards for it when we'd go. And, and so I was like, oh my God, I have to go, I wanna go. And my parents were like, no, you cannot go to the Haunted Mill. And I was like, yes, and I, I was five. My brother was like one, cause he's four years younger than me. So he was, a, he was a toddler. They decided instead every year, the Knights baseball team, which was like the minor league baseball team that's in our local area, they would put on a haunted stadium thing. And it was always different. Like that's what they said one year they went and it was just like a bunch of like ghost baseball players playing a game. And it really, like it just wasn't that scary. So they said, all right, we'll take you to the Knights one. And if you can handle the Knights one, then we'll consider going up to the haunted mill. And I was like, okay, let's do this. I was so jazzed. I was like, frick yeah, like I'm ready, I'm ready for this. I'm so excited for this, I can't wait. And we get there and we pay for the tickets. And they sent us down, it was different. This time it was actually a haunted house. So they send us down, they have us go and like start walking down these stairs and it starts to get dark. Like just a normal haunted house, just the lights start to go out. It starts to get dark. You know, there's like the fog machines and the dim lighting. And I went, nope. And my mom and dad were like, what do you mean? Nope. And I remember my brother was there too. Cause they were like, he's a baby, whatever. We'll just carry him. Like he's not gonna remember any of this. And he, do he does not remember it. Or no, sorry, at the time dad was holding him. I said, I can't, I can't do this. And they were like, what do you mean? And I was like, I can't walk through the pitch black. And so then like we're doing this and they're like, we have, we have to move. And so then I start crying. And so my dad was like, well shit. So he picks me up and he gives me, well, he gives Bradley to my mom and my mom has to carry Bradley. <laughs> and my dad carried me the entire time. And let me tell you, I did not look at it. I think I looked at like two things. Like the whole time my head was like in his shoulder. They would be like, come on, just look at this. Like, it's not that scary or whatever. Like, you know, it would just be like a Frank. Like I remember one of the things they got me to look at was like a coffin that had the Bride of Frankenstein in it. And she was just a dummy. It wasn't like a real person. And they were like, just look, it's not scary, promise. And there, so I, I was like, I got kind of like peaked. I kind of like just checked a little bit just to feel it out. And I was like, all right, that's not that bad. That That's okay, That's I can handle that one. But yeah, other than that, I don't really remember a whole lot. I know like at one point in the locker room, they had like meat hooks or something. I think I saw that. I know at one point, <laughs> Ghostface jumped out and that was the only thing. Bradley was actually really calm, but Ghostface from Scream jumped out and scared him. Just like, I think it was just the startle of it because they yelled and he started crying. And I remember Ghostface being like, oh my God, no, it's okay. It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you. My mom was like, my mom talks about that still and she's like, I'm sure these people thought we were God awful parents. And I couldn't be like, no, she wanted to come and now she's, she's afraid. We had to do this to prove a point. Uh, but it would, uh, what a great story that is. Like what a, that's one of those things where you're like, man, just to add that to the reason why I don't wanna have children because they ask for shit and then they do that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's that was my first experience in a haunted house. Needless to say, I did not get to go to the haunted mill, but I still tried. I came out of the haunted house, didn't, didn't see anything. 
And I was like, that wasn't that bad. I like that. Can we go to the haunted mill now? And my dad was like, are you kidding me? Like he lived, that was verbatim to my five-year-old self. He was like, are you, are you kidding me right now? Like, what is wrong with you? And I was like, what? I, it was fine. And he was like, it wasn't fine. I carried you the entire time. So, so that was my first experience. We also, in the neighborhood that I grew up in, we had a, a neighbor who my dad had gone to high school with. And every year they turn their garage into a haunted house. And if I'm being 100% honest, like if Nikki and I ever have just a, a ton of money and free time, I'm doing that too, because I, I love when people do that. That is, it's such a wonderful community and like good Halloween environment. First of all, just gotta take a time out. This faded shade and this, this one right here, it's like kind of a gl glittery lavender shade. Oh my God, man, that was exactly what I wanted for this look and I did not realize it until I started applying it, but it's like got this kind of, it's just given me like the purple glittery, like perfect Halloween shade look. I love it, I love it. That was, oh my God, that would brilliance. I was, I was not expecting it, but I am so here for it. Okay, done with the eyeshadow stuff. For now, I may have to touch up a couple areas uh, just depending on how the, the webbing goes. But for right now, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do just a basic cat eye. And then from there, I'm gonna kind of draw out um, and do the web effect. Uh, what I'm thinking is I've seen ones, cause I did look up some pictures just to get some ideas. I've seen ones where they go like all over. I don't want, think I wanna do that. What I'm thinking is maybe cat eye and then have one connected and then do just like one little web set on each side. I think that might look cool and still subtle. And then I'm just, I think like right here on my cheek, just gonna do like a teeny tiny little spider. And then we'll be done. I love the purple though. I'm really like, I feel like it's very Halloween-y. Okay, so that's my first, uh, that was my first experience with the haunted house. Now my neighbors, they did um, this haunted house every year. They're pretty committed to it. I mean, it was, every year it got bigger and better. Um, and I know now as an adult, um, I've, I've done a couple of things. I went to Hong Kong in New Orleans, um, which is basically a, a convention where um, creators get in I ideas for creating like haunted houses. And um, it's a trade show too. So you can like buy stuff for your haunted houses there. And it was really, it, it was a very interesting and enlightening experience trying to like feel out, you know, how everybody does it differently. And it was for all different things. You know, people did it for school fundraisers, people did it for themselves, people did it as businesses. So it's very interesting. Um, but I, I met a couple people there who literally, they just do it just for the fun of it. They don't charge admission. They just, you know, do their own backyard haunted houses, very similar to the way my neighbors did it. And they spend tons of time and money and energy in it. And I, I love it. So there was another, <laughs> Another experience uh, we had, and for a really long time, I wouldn't go into it because my parents would always bring up like, I'd be like, I can do haunted houses. And they'd be like, do you remember the Knights game? And I'd be like, yeah, never mind, I can't do haunted houses. So I just kind of embraced my scaredy cat ways for a little while. Like I like, like I said, I like scary stuff, but to an extent. And so when that happened, I was kind of like, uh, maybe I should just, you know, recognize where, where I have strengths and weaknesses and recognize that haunted houses are not one of my, my strong points. So maybe I should avoid those. Uh, I'm not happy with how this wing turned out and I'm not sure how to fix it if I'm being 100% honest. I don't know, it's so damn thick. That's the issue, it's real thick. I'm thinking maybe I just make it like really thick, like a really thick wing all the way out here and then I drop the web down. That might save it. I'm gonna switch products, that might help too. Anyway, so these neighbors, they had this haunted house in their backyard. I decided I probably shouldn't go in. So my whole family went in and because my dad had known them and they were friends in high school, they there was always a line, but they would let us kind of like sneak in. They'd be like, come on, come on through. It was really nice. Cause you know, part of it is, you know, you're also in the middle of trick or treating. So the longer you stand there, the less you, candy you get. So yeah, they would get us in and they would let us go through and they let, oh, that actually did help it. That helped it a lot actually. So yeah, I think I am gonna drop down and do like a, the webbing kind of coming from down. This is a thick ass spider web, y'all. Let me tell you, he is thick with like a lot of C's, just more C's than I was ready for. I'm just like pulling out products at this point. Like what is gonna fix this? This is why I normally don't film myself doing eyeliner because to try and like carry on a story while I'm doing this is very challenging. It's not true, actually, internally I'm screaming right now, but it's fine. I'm just gonna tell myself it's fine. Okay, let me see if I continue 
if I can continue to talk while I also am super focused. So our neighbors did this haunted house. My aunt stayed out with me because I was like, I can't do it. Well, my family came out and they were like, it's not that bad. Like it's got some scary parts, but I think you can handle it. So they were trying to convince me like, do you want to do it? Like once we leave, we're not coming back. So if you want to do it, then you got to decide now. And I was like, I don't know, what do I do? What do I do? So my aunt was like, well, let's go in. Let's just try it. We'll go in, it'll be fine. It was not fine. That one I could not look through because I had to walk. So I had to see that and I was like not ready for it at all. I was very uh, afraid the whole time. It was not, it was not a good, it was not a good sitch for me. It really wasn't that bad. Like they had a room, you know, like one of those black and white rooms where like people are all dressed in black and white and they move like from random spots in the room and you're like, oh my God. Um, they had one of those. They had like this room that was all camo and so you couldn't really see anything. And then they had like a couple other kind of freaky things, um, but it really wasn't that horrible, but I just wasn't, I shouldn't have gone in. I shouldn't have pushed myself to do it. And I did, so that was on me as a child. I was like, never again, never again. There was like a little line right here and it kind of looks like there's a little teeny tiny spider in there. Just a little teeny tiny baby one. Okay, off camera, I did do this wing. It went actually a lot smoother. And then I just did like little extended edges. I will connect them on camera for you guys, but it was very hard to try and focus and tell the story and not make this look awful. So that's why I just went ahead and was like, let's just let me, let me focus on this. So, so that's where we are that now you're all caught up. I was like 14, 13 or 14 is what I would say. Probably. I was like, why am I afraid? It was literally, I just had this conversation with myself. I was like, why, why are you afraid of everything? It's annoying. So I just decided like, fuck it. Just don't be afraid anymore. That sounds so stupid. And now as an adult, I, it doesn't work. Now I'm afraid, but I'm afraid of different things. Like if, if an ax murderer came in right now, I'd be like, okay. But I'm afraid of um, like failure, um, existential dread. I feel that and that kind of fear. Yeah, that, that stuff scares me. The death is like a little intimidating, but nah. Mm. So I had this, this discussion with, I said, self, just stop. Just, you gotta, you gotta grow up. You gotta just, you know, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. If it's your time to get ax murdered, then that's your time. So at that point I was like, I gotta handle this shit differently. So when, when that happened, when I had that conversation with myself, I decided I wanna try and like, I wanna try and go to haunted houses more. I wanna I wanna embrace the fear. So I, I convinced my dad to take me and a group of friends to Scarewinds. It was super fun. I loved it. And the way I dealt with the the people I didn't wanna deal with, the creatures, uh, when they would like, you know, come up and scare you or whatever, as I just like talk to them, I would just be like, hi, I love your face scar. Like, that is so cool. Can I have one to match? And like, and and they, so they would leave me alone. And it worked and it was really a fun way to handle it. I was like, okay, I like haunted houses. I wanna start trying to do them more. So then flash forward. So that was like my eighth grade year of uh, in middle school. Flash forward to my senior year of high school. So uh, like four years later, one of my friends decided we should go to, the haunted mill full circle right what a story full circle so um it only it only took 13 years and progression but whatever so i finally get to go to the haunted mill so we go to the haunted mills like a big group and they were like okay um and we were a big enough group because you know sometimes they'll send you in with other people like we were a big enough group we had like 12 people so they were like you guys can go in as one group and you won't have any strangers in your group and we were like cool all right is it even no but does it have to be no, because it's not going to be. So here we are. I'm gonna do my lashes first just because I feel like that always helps the look. So I'm gonna do the lashes and then I'll do the little spider. Um, also, I haven't committed to the spider yet. I'm thinking I'm gonna do him, but I may, I may change my mind. So back to the interesting part of the story. So we go to the haunted mill. We go in they said, okay, whoever is, is willing to get messed with the most, we need somebody brave in front, somebody brave in back. And they're like, the person back is gonna get messed with the most. And I said, put me in the back. I'm fine with it. I'm, I'll take the bullet. I'm dude. I'm good. So we we linked and we like we're all holding on to each other because you don't want to lose your group. So we were holding on to each other. Um, we all had like our hands around our waist, except for me. There was nobody behind me because I was the back. I was the train. I said I'm the abuse caboose. That's what I was because I was gonna get the brunt of it and I was fine with it. So we get in and it really is just kind of you know very basic, not not super bad but still entertaining. Um, and there's. I was just talking to anybody who would listen to me. All these characters are coming out and chainsaws and stuff. And I'm talking about, oh yeah. Also we were supposed to wear costumes, but only like two of us did. So I was a referee. So I had like a black and white striped dress on. And I was like, you know, it was like one of those, like the, the short dresses. Cause I was in high school. So it was like, you know, I was like, I was trying to see like how edgy I could be. So I was like wearing a short dress, whatever. I don't do that now. Now I didn't. 
So I had on my referee dress and I'm in the back. And like, I know at one point you get in an elevator and it's not a real, real out of elevator. It's just they put you in a room and then it like moves around a little bit. So it feels like it's kind of like got a dropping effect or whatever. And there was an elevator conductor who couldn't talk and he kind of led us through part of the way. And I was talking his ass off. I was like, what do you like? So it's like, what's your deal? Like, is this like, are you the elevator operator to hell? Like, is that like, is Satan cool? And just, you know, just really talking with him. And I was like, are, do you have a girlfriend? And then he was like, cause he can't talk. So he was like, and I was like, do you want a girlfriend? And he was like, then so I was like, oh, cool. So yeah. So and then like he, he only could bring us to a certain place and then he had to like leave. And normally he's just supposed to slip away, but he like grabbed my hand and he was like, and I was like, so yeah. So I guess actually, uh, cause that was before Nikki and I, right before Nikki and I started dating. So I guess actually I never technically broke up with him. So yikes. I guess you've been the other woman this whole time. So we were, dri we we're driving along, we're, we're cruising. It's all good, it's all good. Now I've mentioned in other videos, I don't necessarily love the Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't hate them, but Freddy Krueger is actually very, he's very unsettling to me because the whole concept of somebody who kills you in your dreams is just wild. So right before this, when we went to buy our Halloween costumes that year, my mom had taken us to Spirit Halloween and we had seen like, you know, they always do the animatronics or whatever. And this particular location had a couple animatronics in it. So, you know, they have like the Michael Myers ones and the one of them is Freddy Krueger and he like kind of reaches out at you. So we get to this one room and in this room, it's like a bedroom scene. There's like a little kid in a bed and they're like sitting up screaming and Freddy Krueger is coming through the TV and he's like moving, like he's got his claw coming out. Well, my ass, like I said, I was being loud and obnoxious the whole time, talking to whoever, whatever. Um, so I think it's one of these animatronics. I was wrong. So I, I go, hey, look, it's Freddy Krueger. And his ass comes out of the TV and starts following me. And let me tell you, the 11 people in front of me, I pushed all of them for it. I said, he's real, we gotta go. And I moved that whole train forward. And everybody like, I would, they, they were like, we're gonna fall, you gotta stop. And I was like, we gotta move, man. Like, this is not a joke. And he is, now he's on me. He's like, knows that he's gotten to me. So now he's just following me. And I was like, please stop, like, please. I was like, I'm sorry. And so then they had, cause you, you know, it's like a maze or whatever. They had areas where I guess you could, they, the same characters could pop up um, in different locations. And so he comes back and at first, I thought it was like a different person dressed as Freddy Cougar. No, it was the same dude because he sees me come by and he's like, what's up Stripes, you quiet now? And I was like, oh my God. I was, it was like one of the few times in my, my older life at a haunted house I've actually been afraid. I was very afraid. Okay, so I feel like we spent a lot of time watching me do eyeliner today. So I opted not to do the spider. I don't feel like it's necessary, but I do kind of like the look. I love the purple. Actually, the combination of purples is really gorgeous and it's something I may want to do like without the webs on it, but the webs are okay. Nikki's like, they don't look bad. And I'm like, ah, they don't look, they could look better. But you know, remember I'm just now starting to like really force myself to get comfortable with the uh, eyeliner. So I'll take what I can get. I did go ahead and just, I don't know, say what you will about Kat Von D, but this Alchemist holographic palette, the highlighter one, this got some really damn beautiful shades. I went ahead and set because that was what the highlighter I had under it. I went, I set just like a little bit over it as well. I don't know if that helped or not, but I don't know. I like it. I'm a fan. So yeah, this is a uh, this is my introduction to uh, to the Halloween season. My first attempt, uh, even as we're filming it, this is my first attempt at doing any sort of Halloween makeup this year. So yeah, I mean, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you like us, definitely subscribe. Halloween is gonna be pretty exciting. I'm really ready for it. Um, and I'm really thinking very hard about it and working on conceptualizing uh, everything. This one was just a spur of the moment. Like I came home from work and I was like, I'm gonna do some webs on my eyes. Let's, get, uh, Nikki, get up, let's do this. So yeah, other than that, I hope you guys are all safe, healthy. You have a wonderful day and you stay girly with a dark twist.